Hi everyone and welcome to part two of my simulator series. Now from the last video um, I wanted to make some changes to the storage system because in the last video you'll notice that the storage was actually counting down. So it started at like 10 out of 10 and then it had counted its way down to zero before you had to sell your items. And when I looked at other simulator games then I realised that most of them actually work the other way so you start off with zero and then you work your way up to the maximum value before you can no longer collect items so i've changed the ordinary you know the original storage value in the player value script and i've changed it now to maximum storage or max storage for short and i'm just setting that off as 10 to start with so players will have a maximum amount of 10 storage spaces before they have to sell their items i'm also having to change the script within the collectible part and all I'm doing is changing it from subtracting to adding the value. So we now need to check that the part size value is now less than or equal to the player value. Well, the um, max storage. And then otherwise, you know, because you now you want it to um, add up from zero. And then eventually when it reaches 10, then we want the player to have to go and sell their items. So we also need to change the script within the cell part as well because that currently resets the value back down to um, back to 10 and we don't want it to set it to 10 when the player sells their items, we want them to set it to zero so they have to start again. So we just need to change that as well so it no longer says 10 and that's easy enough. So now when we test it and we just click on the storage value, we'll see here in the bottom right that it starts counting up. And then when it gets to 10 in a moment, then we'll be able to um, see that we won't be able to collect any more pieces like that. And then, yep, we have to sell them. And you can see that we've now got 10 cash and our storage goes back down to zero. But now we want a way to actually see this on screen so players can actually track their progress and see how much cash and how much storage they have. So I'm going to add a screen GUI and within that we need to add a frame and it's not showing up here so I just need to search for it. And then I'm just going to put some settings down here and you'll notice I'm changing an anchor point here. This is changing the vertical anchor point. So we can just center it nicely at the left hand side of the screen. And in the position, I'm just going to move it across from the edge by a tiny amount. And I'm also going to just set it to 50% of the way down the screen. And you can just copy the values here when I've enlarged it. You can just pause it and copy these values. Although don't copy it straight away because it takes me a while to um, get the right size on it. It's just, just a little bit. There we go, that should be fine for now. But we've got two values, we've got storage and cache, so I just want a bit more height on the box so we can fit two values in there. There we go, that looks better. So now within this frame, that's just going to be the box, as it were, that holds our two values. So within that, I'm just going to add two text labels. And again, they're not showing up here in the list, so I'm going to have to search for them. There we go. So I'm going to have one for the player's cache, and I'm going to have one for player's storage. So you can, again, you can just copy these values down. Um, and you can also play around with the values and just make it look however you want. But just for the tutorial, I'm just doing two simple labels. So of course, one's going to be called cache, and then I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm just going to call the other one storage. And then we just need to change the position of the second label that we created so it isn't overlapping the top one. And we do that just by moving its position down. And there we go. So I'm setting the transparency of the background frame to one so you can't see the background frame. It's literally just there to hold the place of those two. And then what I am going to do is change the color of these and remove the border picks the border outline because i just didn't want a uh, a black border around the boxes and i 
I'm just going to go simply blue here, but you can always add fancy graphics or you can just play around with your own styles and fonts and things like that. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, then I'm just going to do basic white text in a blue box. And just any old font will do. There we go. And I'm just going to remove the text because we don't need it to say label at all. We're actually going to set the text in the scripts that I add later. And yeah, I'm going to add a, oh, I'm going to have to search for this as well, UI corner. So that's just going to make rounded corners around the box you can see there. Just makes it look a bit smoother and nicer. I'm going to duplicate that and just drag it into the other one. There we go. So now it's time to add a script. And because it's a GUI, then we need to do it as a local script. So there it is. Okay, and you can just pause the video once this types out. I'm just going to uh, skip ahead and so you don't have to see me type it all out. But there we go. So you can pause the video here. Um, this is just going to set the initial value here when you join the game, so it won't actually update when you collect the parts. So you can see when I sell them, then it doesn't actually update. So we'll do that next. And we do that by using a get property changed signal, which basically just listens out for the cash value, um, the fact cash value value. Um, Whenever that changes, then it will connect and call a function and whatever is in this function will happen whenever the value changes. So all we want to do is just to update the text in the text label to give the new amount of cash. Now you don't have to use a dollar sign there in the speech marks. It can be any currency symbol you want or none at all, but I'm just using dollars just for the sake of this. And now when we go to sell, you'll see that it updates. And there we go, six whole dollars. Let's just top it up a bit. There we go. So that's that working now. We just need to do the same for storage. Now it is a very similar script to get the storage system working. We just need to make a few different changes and mainly just around in the variables at the top of the script. So you can see we have a couple more variables, one for the max storage one for the player storage and we're setting the initial value there as zero out of the maximum value and again that won't update yet we just need to add more lines to the script to actually get the number to update so again we're using the get property change signal so it's going to listen out for the value of the player storage whenever that changes then it will connect a function and we just want the text label to update with the new values. And again, you can pause the video and just enter all this when I've completed this. We just want it to say player storage value. And then we have to put two full stops with the slash in speech marks. And then two more full stops with max storage dot value. So that's just going to tally up the storage like it's doing now and then when you sell the items it should jump back down to zero there we go so it jumped back down to zero and it gave four dollars now another problem we have which was highlighted from the first video is that the collectible parts have no limit to how much they spawn in and it could get a bit carried away so what i'm going to do is in the collectible spawn script I'm going to add an if statement to check the number of collectibles that are currently in the collectibles folder in the workspace. And if there are more than 10 parts in there, then I'm going to stop them spawning in. So I'm just going to say that if the number of collectibles in that folder are less than or equal to 10, then it's fine to spawn one in because there's less than 10. And then it will automatically think, well, if there are more than 10, then I'm not going to bother putting one in. And I'm going to wait until there are less than 10 to put a new one in. But we have a problem. I tested it and it actually spawned in 11 pieces. 
that's because I'd put that if it was equal to 10, then you can add another one. So I said, if it's, if the current value plus a new one is less than 10 or equal to 10, then it's okay to add one. And that seemed to fix it. So you can see that when we reach 10 parts and sell them, more parts will continue spawning and we can continue from there. So guys, if you found this useful, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel and make sure to stick around for part three. Bye.